I got it. Pardon me. There we go. It's it's we got it. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Great. And it kind of asks permission for us because it has this little pop up. Yeah, it does. It well, it's letting us know that that it's happening. Okay. Hey, I guess we can get started. Okay, yeah. So uh welcome everybody. Uh thanks for uh Thanks for coming to this event. I think this is going to be very informative, and I hope it um, I hope it serves you well. Um, we were just talking earlier about how something like this is is really important at a time like this when a lot of people are sort of throwing their hands in the air, going, "Oh my God, everything is in chaos!" And so this is a, a way of saying to you, "Don't don't let your finances go." And you're going to get some good ideas and some good tools to work with tonight to help you focus on holding that together. So anyway, I'm uh, Margot Armstrong, also known as Jill. You may know me as Jill, but please call me Margot. Um, anyway, I'm, uh, oh, somebody else is here. Okay, let them in. Um, I've been involved with Elephant Artist Relief now for almost nine years. And uh, it's, a, it's a very important um, part of my life to be part of EAR because what we do is uh, we help artists who are either artists in, in crisis or artists who are not in crisis but could use a, a little guidance or a little, um, uh, what's the word, uh, guidance or uh, structure to, um, to structure their, their career. And that is what... Um, that is what this is about. Oh, see, I should, we should have waited a few more minutes because we had, we had two more people coming in. Here we go. Anyway, um, so Elephant Artist Relief Society, uh, you can find our, our website at Elephant Artist Relief at, it's just Elephant Artist Relief, I think. Elephant Artist Relief Society. You're also elephantartist.com. Yes, thank you. Elephant Artist Relief on, on uh, Facebook. Also, Ear is for Artists on um, Instagram. And uh, also, um, Studio E is for Artists, also on Instagram. Um, and just a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, first, uh, I will deliver the, um, the land acknowledgement. And then Karen will introduce um, Brom, our first speaker, and then and Brom will speak, and uh, we'll have our, our microphones off though while he's speaking. If you have questions, you can type them into the chat, and we have a couple of people watching the chat to take note of, of questions. And then when Brom is finished speaking, we will have um, maybe 15 minutes or so to address questions, and there could be a little bit of discussion then too. And then when we're finished with that, we will go to um, to Anna and um, Liz Wong. I'm sorry. From Momentum. Anna. Yes, I know. I don't know where I got Anna. I'm so sorry. Liz Wong from Momentum. And we'll do the same thing there. We'll turn off the microphones, have her speak, and then um, turn them on again and, and uh, have another question period. And then at the end, we will open it up to more general questions if there are any. So um, without further ado, um, I'd like to deliver the land acknowledgement. In the spirit of respect, truth and reconciliation, Elephant Artist Relief Society and Studio E gratefully honor and acknowledge Mokinstis and the traditional Treaty 7 territory and oral practices of the Blackfoot Confederacy Siksika, Kanai, Pikani, as well as the Yasi, Nakoda, and Sutina nations. We acknowledge that this territory is home to the Metis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, within the historical Northwest Metis homeland. Finally, we acknowledge all nations, Indigenous and non, who live, work, and play on this land and who honor and celebrate this territory. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Karen Begg, who will um, be introducing Brahm. So thank you very much. 
Hello, everybody. My name is Karen Begg. I'm vice president of the Art Elephant Artist Relief Society, and I welcome you all here today. I'd like to take a moment and just say thank you for joining us for this financial literacy chat. We welcome both the Alberta Treasury Branches uh, Branch for Arts and Culture. Brom is here. Uh, also, we have Momentum and Liz Wong uh, is here to speak as well. And she's a financial empowerment, empowerment coordinator. I'd like to give you a little background about Brom. He's had the privilege of being involved with artists for most of his life. He began a financial career in 2015 and he joined ATB and he's committed to providing specialized financing to the art in, arts industry. Uh, it's a great fit for him. Uh, the branch of arts and culture is one of the best moves that he's made in his career so far. He deals with creatives and artists and not-for-profit organizations and helps them with their banking needs, accounts, investments, mortgages, loans, and MasterCards. And he truly does love his job. Also on our speaking platform today, we have a representative, Liz Wong, a financial empowerment uh, facilitator from Momentum. Momentum organization uh, is a partner in Calgary's poverty reduction, Enough for All. And their uh, motto is learn, earn, save, and thrive. They once run some wonderful programs. And Liz is a facilitator and part of the financial empowerment team at Momentum, a local not-for-profit. They do instructions on workshops and budgets, credit and banking. Liz specifically runs the Momentum Savings Challenge, an in-app rewards program for savers living on low income. You're welcome to join the challenge for a few free uh, Cuber Savings app or visit Momentum Savings. Uh, for more information. I welcome you both. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I will just share my screen here quickly. This is where we we'll would be clapping, by the way. <laughs> I always find it weird on Zoom, just silent. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, that looks great. Yes. Perfect. Uh, so welcome everyone and thank you for joining us as uh, I go over some financial literacy pieces uh, for everyone, but uh, definitely for artists as well. Um, and to introduce myself once again, and thank you for that, Karen. My name is Brahm Sandhu and uh, I'm a culture banker at ATB. That's my email there if you uh, would like to contact me. Uh, today we'll be talking about a few things, uh, the branch arts and culture for one, uh, how to live within your means and what that means, uh, where to put your money for short-term and long-term savings, how to borrow money when you need it, and how to maintain a good credit report. And of course, there's, there will be time for questions at the end. Uh, so what is the Branch Arts and Culture? Uh, for those of you who might not know about the Branch Arts and Culture, first and foremost, we, we are a financial institution uh, specifically designed for independent artists, creative entrepreneurs, and not-for-profit organizations across the board. Uh, we're committed to celebrating the creative communities we have here throughout the province. Our spaces actually act as galleries and venues to host educational workshops, gallery openings, and networking events, which we look forward to returning to doing in person in the coming months as hopefully uh, COVID and Omicron wind down. Um, everyone who works at the branch has an affiliation with the arts from stage managers to actors to musicians. So we understand the hustle and can also assist with some other important tools to help your businesses, such as reviewing sponsorship proposals, business, business and marketing plans, and help direct you to additional resources within our communities as well. Uh, you can keep in touch with us by subscribing to our newsletter, uh, which will let you know about upcoming workshops uh, and events, as well as what our members have going, what our members are up to uh, throughout the community. Uh, we also have a Facebook page that highlights these activities. Uh, so please follow or subscribe to our newsletter and we'd love to stay in touch. Um, and so here's a little bit more about the branch. Um, it's really a networking uh, clubhouse for people in the community. 
and very focused on the uh, arts and nonprofit sectors, as previously mentioned. Uh, we have two locations, one in Edmonton and one in Calgary. Uh, the Edmonton one is in the CKUA building in uh, downtown. And in, Ed and in Calgary, we're at the Stephen Ave branch, uh, right next to the modern stake uh, on Stephen Ave. Um, and so here are my team members, uh, fantastic colleagues. Um, in Edmonton, we have Isabel, our director, Anu, John, and Jocelyn. Um, and in Calgary, we have myself, Derek, my leader, and Juan, uh, my fellow culture banker. So what do we do and who do we serve? Uh, artists, creative entrepreneurs, art sector businesses, and nonprofit organizations. Um, and so just to get into it a little bit, uh, the first rule of budgeting is to understand where your income is coming from. Um, it can come from earned income, wages, tips, salaries, and things you receive from employment, unearned income, uh, sources other than employment and profit from a business, such as uh, interest from savings, stocks, uh, dividends, unearned income, and also from the in forms of uh, grants and uh, cash prizes. And then non-cash non support could be considered as uh, goods or services, such as living accommodations, um, during residencies or donations, et cetera. Um, and then, so the budget, what is a budget? Um, it's a list uh, of your income and your spending and a, a tool to help you manage your money. Uh, your budget should really dictate how you're able to spend your money. Uh, for example, if you were to be planning a, a vacation and you know it's gonna cost you about 5,000, uh, if your budget says it's only, you only have 3,000 available for a vacation, you would either have to rearrange your budget to make sure that you're staying in in the positive and not going negative, um, or adjust your vacation plans. Uh, a good way to prepare your budget. Um, here are a few steps. Uh, so to try, I personally like to go by month for to do my budget up. Um, I can provide you all with a spreadsheet at the end of the uh, at the end of this um, presentation so that you can start doing it yourselves as well if you'd like. Uh, so you track your spending for the month, um, use that to figure out your monthly expenses. Then you estimate your monthly income and determine if you're in the black or the red. Um, the black or red meaning that you're, able, that you're spending more than you're making if you're in the red um, or uh, vice versa. And if you're in the red, we should find ways to help you reduce your expenses or find ways to increase your income or both. Why not both? <laughs> um, budgeting tip for the self-employed, um, it's to have four bank accounts really, uh, a checking account where uh, all your main expenses would come out of, a paycheck, a paycheck if you're an entrepreneur, you have to make sure you're paying yourself. Um, and it's always good to budget for that and pay yourself a salary as you would receive if you were an employee of a business. A cash reserve um, uh, for general uh, expenses that you may know are coming out and emergency funds if say for whatever reason you're not able to, to work or if something comes up, it's always good to have, in my eyes, six months savings. Um, and that is something that we can take from your budget um, just to make sure that you're safe. Um, it's always a good idea to uh, well, exceed what you think you're actually gonna be spending. Uh, I like to us usually recommend people 15% to their expenses so that you're covered no matter what um, and just set up their rainy day fund. Some good deposit products and we'll get into it more later on are bank accounts, term deposits, which are unregistered deposits, meaning uh, they wouldn't be connected to a government program uh, like a TFSA or an RRSP um, and then mutual funds, which can really actually cover all of them. Uh, bank accounts. Uh, checking account is a day-to-day -day account uh, where you would put your banking uh, purchases, paying bills, payroll, etc., savings, um, money for the future, and it earns interest over time. Um, and talking about savings, uh, here is a little bit of an example of the compound interest you can earn once you start using uh, savings products. Um, it, for example, if you were to have an initial investment of a thousand and you contributed a thousand and you had an annual interest rate of one and a half percent and you invested that over 30 years with compound interest, usually through a mutual fund, 
uh, you would earn about 8166 over the 30 years. Uh, these are this is using really uh, basic numbers, and usually with mutual funds, the the rate of return is a lot higher. Um, and then another example, just using a, a bit higher percentage, uh, it would it would uh, definitely almost double your your uh, interest that you earn over that same period. Um, just a recap of the examples. And so an RRSP, uh, Registered Retirement Savings Plan. It's one way to save for your retirement and it offers significant benefits. Um, uh, the benefits include paying lower taxes now, uh, you grow tax-free, and um, you can register an espousal plan. Uh, and so the first benefit, what that means is uh, your contribution is tax deductible. For instance, if you're in a 10% tax bracket and you contribute 1000 your tax refund is $100. Uh, and if you're in a 30% tax bracket and you contribute 1000 your tax refund is $300. Uh, the best part of an RSP is that you get money back and you can take a tax break if needed. It's always recommended that you speak to an accountant um, to make sure you're contributing as much as you need to kind of lowering your tax bracket. Uh, and it's the best utilized after speaking to an accountant as well. Uh, the second benefit is tax-free growth, which is a great benefit. Uh, interest you earn in, in an RSP is not taxed until you withdraw it. Uh, and most people cash out their RSPs when their income is a lot lower. So they pay lower taxes on the contribution that they made and the interest that they've earned, um, as well as when you take out money from an RSP, you pay something that's called the withhold, like a withdrawal tax almost. Uh, and that goes directly to the government. Uh, it also counts as income. So when you're not earning as much income, uh, once you retire or once you are taking a break from working, uh, you're able to have less of a, I guess, burden from the government uh, because you'll be paying them less money as you go forward. Um, and then the spousal plan. Uh, a, higher, a higher earning spouse contributes some of his or her contr contribution to the lower earning spouse's RRSP. And so when they retire, the higher earners RRSP can be valued in a lower tax bracket and at a lower rate. Uh, withdrawal from an RRSP under a home buyer's plan. Uh, so the home buyer's plan is for a first time home buyer. Uh, you can withdraw up to 35 grand from your RRSP without tax penalty to buy your first home. Uh, and to say without tax penalty, it's really, it's just to defer the tax penalty. Um, if you aren't able to pay it back in the 15 year period that you're admitted. Um, and so the money in the account can, has to be in there for 90 days or longer. Uh, and the money has money put back into the RSP can't be used as a contribution. So it won't lower your taxes. It's more of a, a loan you're taking from your RSP for that 15 years so that you can use it as a down payment on your home uh, to buy furniture, top grade appliances, uh, wh whatever it is that you need at that time, you're able to use that from your RSP. Um, And then a withdrawal from RSP under a lifelong learning plan. Uh, you can withdraw up to 10,000 per year, 20,000 total for educational purposes with no tax penalty. Uh, it can be used for yourself or your spouse or common law partners. Uh, you have 10 years to repay it. Uh, and you have unlimited withdrawals from the RRSP until the fourth, Jan January 4th of the calendar year from first date of the withdrawal. Uh, money must be in the account for. 90 days or longer, just like the home buyer's plan. Um, and then maximum annual RRSP contributions. Uh, each year you can contribute 18% of the previous year's income. In 2022, that number is $29,210. Um, and the deadline to contribute is usually March 1st, which is 60 days at the beginning of the new year. And the contribution room is always found on your notice of assessment. And then we get into the TFSA. The TFSA is actually a really, really good uh, a program to save. I, I like to save for a short term. I actually usually save my vacation funds in my TFSA. 
uh, and I have it in a mutual fund. Um, like in RSP, the tax free savings accounts are a great way to save for retirement as well. Sorry, my lights just went off here. It was motion controlled. Um, but the way taxes work on the TFSA are a lot different. So the way it differs from an RSP is the funds deposited into uh, tax are not tax deductible and the withdrawals are not tax taxable. Meaning all the interest that you make while your money is in the TFSA, it's not taxed once you take it out. Uh, and that's really beneficial, especially if you're using it in a uh, few investment vehicles, such as uh, term deposits, which are unregistered, as we spoke about before, GICs, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. The interest and dividends you earn, like I said earlier, are not taxable. And uh, the lifetime maximum limit from 2022 is 81500 And uh, the lifetime limit increases every year. Uh, it was 75.5 and it increased, I believe, six grand uh, on January 1st of this year. Um, and so every year that you can, every time you contribute to the TFSA, it's a good idea to track that uh, just to make sure that you don't over contribute. Um, because if you put money into a TFSA and you take money out, so say you contribute 10,000 and you take $10,000 out, um, you still have a contribution of 10,000. Uh, so you for you'd only be able to contribute 71,500 going forward because you've made that $10,000 contribution. Uh, TFSA is very convenient because you can withdraw time, your funds at any time without penalty and uh, but withdraw withdrawal will make a little bit of room to add again. Uh, TFSA is non-disruptive. Non uh, it won't interfere with the following. Uh, the guaranteed income supplement, the old age security, age credit, employment insurance, uh, Canada Child Tax Benefit, Working Income Tax Benefit, or the GST credits. And then if we get into lending a little bit, um, here are a few different types of uh, credit vehicles that you can take. So there are credit cards, line of credits, personal loans, and mortgages. Um, to get into the first one there, a credit card is money you can borrow from usually a financial institution using a card such as the ATV MasterCard. This gives you access to the set amount of money, which is your credit limit. And it's on a revolving basis uh, where you would pay a monthly minimum re to repay. With credit cards, it's a good idea to not use them more than you need to or more than you know you can pay um, because the interest rates are considerably higher than revolving other revolving uh, types of credit like lines of credits, um, and that's just because they, they carry a little bit more risk. Um, and so a line of credit. A line of credit is actually a, a revolving credit facility that's really similar to a credit card. Uh, the only difference is the application, really. Um, and when you draw from a line of credit, you only pay the amount that uh, you're you are borrowing. So you'd only have to pay the interest on that similar to a credit card, uh, but the but the interest rate on these are uh, quite, quite way lower actually. Whereas credit cards at ATB, for example, the interest rate's at uh, 20%. Um, and then if you were to take a credit card from like a department store, like the Bay or Canadian Tire, the, the interest rate would be closer to 30 to 40%. Uh, a line of credit is typically uh, at around six to 9%. So there's a huge difference there. Um, and you're you're not punished as much really for borrowing for long periods of time using a line of credit. And then with the personal loan, um, a personal loan you would receive a full amount of money up front, which is unlike a line of credit, uh, because you're receiving the full amount of money up front. Uh, you have to make a blended payment to this type of loan, um, and so the blended payment would consist of both the interest that you're charged and the principal amount that you're borrowing. Um, and so they're set to be paid off in a certain amount of time. Uh, they, at ATB, they're usually stretched over a five-year period so that it's the payments that you have to make are smaller, but you can pay off personal loans at any time um, that you are able to. Uh, loans, costs and obligations. How to decide what kind of loan is best for your needs how to understand payment, term, payment terms and obligations, and how interest is calculated and why it matters. 
before you sign, you should ask, uh, what is the interest rate? Is it a fixed or a variable rate? A fixed rate is a rate that doesn't, it, will, it won't fluctuate depending on what the prime rate is of Canada. Uh, the prime rate of Canada recently has actually gone really low uh, at the start of the pandemic. Um, and so that's why the variable rates right now are very low, but the fixed rate loans followed uh, the variable rates. Um, the only difference is when, when the policy rate or the prime rate of Canada starts going up, the fixed rate will stay the same, whereas the variable rate will go up. Uh, that's why right now there's a, like a very marginal difference between the interest rates. Uh, the fixed rate is like a, would be about a percent higher um, than the variable rate, but the variable rate is gonna go up uh, as the prime rate does. Um, and then what is the term? The term would be uh, the time we have before we have to discuss uh, the, the interest rate again. Um, uh, would you rather go on a fixed or variable? Um, and so it's basically us discussing the contract of the, of the loan or the line of credit. Um, usually the term matters most when we are uh, talking about mortgages. Uh, because at a mortgage, it's planned over a 25-year period to be paid off, which is called amortization. Uh, the amortization is what stretches uh, your payments so that they're lower and more manageable. And then the term is um, on mortgages typically uh, discussed every five years so that you have a chance to um, talk to your banker about how much interest you're paying, um, how, how big your payment is. Um, and uh, whether you want to go into a fixed or variable rate, depending on what the lending atmosphere is like. And uh, in 2020, uh, many, many clients came and were able to discuss their terms with their banks um, because of their uh, original term ending. Um, and then you want to ask how interest is calculated, um, how fast a loan can be paid down, which is going back to that amortization piece. Um, are there any fees for making prepayments? Uh, these fees are usually on B lenders or private lenders. Um, and it's always good to talk to your banker, especially with mortgages and loans um, about prepayments. Um, and are lump sum or prepayments allowed? Um, uh, lump sum payments on A to B loans are allowed. Um, if we're talking about mortgages, the lump sum payments you're allowed to make 20% of the original mortgage amount every single year. And then what's the impact of a monthly or a bi-weekly payment? Or is a co-signer required? Um, a co-signer would be required when you, when you aren't able to qualify for a loan on your own and you need a little bit extra support. Now, here are some ways to borrow that I don't recommend. Uh, payday loans, pawn shop loans, personal loans, or unnecessary cash advances. Um, borrowed money that has fees or an interest rate that take advantage of your cash and make it harder to get out of debt. Uh, that's really what all of these loan types are. Um, uh, for example, payday loans, uh, they, they usually and very typically charge $23 for every $100 borrow, which, can, which is quite expensive compared to what you would get at a, at a financial institution that is recognized. Um, and if you don't pay your loan back, typically within 62 days, you get charged 30%. Um, and that can really, really hinder your chances of paying off the loan in full. Um, other times there are hidden interest fees that you might not be told about right away. Uh, and they can show up on your credit report and uh, can negatively impact you when you're applying for a line of credit or a loan or a mortgage through a bank. Uh, and just talking about your credit rating, um, what is the credit history? Uh, it's a financial resume really prepared by a third party, which is most usually Equifax or TransUnion. Uh, it's a snapshot in time of how you deal with your money that you borrow. It is an ongoing report, but if uh, a person at a financial institution was to pull your credit, it would just take that snapshot in time for um, that day that they pull it off. Uh, it's, a, it's really a, a collection of information about you. Uh, what's in a credit report? Uh, it's firstly, it's your identity. It would tell me your name, uh, anything, any other you, name you might go by. Uh, for me, my full name is Brumjeet, but on my credit report, it says AKA Brum. 
Uh, it has my date of birth, it has my address, my phone numbers, really everything about me. Um, second is all the inquiries, meaning how many times my credit was pulled. Uh, every time you get your credit pulled, it does reflect negatively on your, on your credit report. Um, that's why it's important to make sure lenders aren't constantly hitting your report. Uh, that's something that happens quite frequent, frequently when you're shopping for cars. Uh, uh, for example, if you were to walk into a Honda or Volkswagen and ask them to finance a car for you, they would, they would, uh, they would go to every bank and get your credit hit, which would really negatively affect you. So it's good to make sure that you instruct the financial advisor or the finance, the finance person at a, at a dealership to limit the amount of hits that he's going to pull or she's going to pull. And third, uh, payment indicators. Um, it, it really tells us if you're paying as you agreed to pay with the lender. Um, it tells us 31 to 59 days past due, 60 to 89 days past due, um, and so on. Um, and it tells us if uh, if you're in a debt management program, which would uh, be similar to uh, like a collection, uh, or if there was a repossession or a bankruptcy. Um, and then the types of credit inquiries. Uh, there are soft inquiries when you're not applying for credit. Uh, stuff like when your landlord is checking to make sure you're paying your bills on time to see if you are uh, somebody that's trustworthy. Um, and hard inquiries when you are applying for credit. And these are the ones that do affect your credit score. Your credit score. This is how your credit score is typically calculated. Uh, it has a lot to do with your payment history, your current debt, meaning the more debt you have, uh, the more it can negatively affect your score, uh, depending on how long you have that debt for. It's always a good idea to maintain about 75% of your total lending to um, re reflect positively on your, on your credit history. Uh, the length of history, meaning uh, have you had a credit card since you were 18? Uh, having credit cards or loans or lines of credits that have um, good history, meaning you made payments on time and you, you're paying as you agreed with the lender, uh, they show, show positively in your credit report and they'll help increase your score. Um, and having different types of credit helps as well. So uh, if you were to pay off a loan, um, that would reflect well. And because the loan is gonna stay on your credit report, uh, if you were to add a line of credit and a mortgage, because they're all different types of lending, it, uh, it, it really will help show lenders and the credit uh, agencies that you're, you're somebody that is uh, trustworthy to uh, borrow. Uh, and of course, the new inquiries that we spoke about, the new inquiries uh, will most likely uh, diminish your score. So it's good to keep those uh, to a uh, to a very low frequency and why do you want to have a good credit score uh, to gain access to credit cards and other types of uh, lending facilities as well as to get better interest rates uh, the last point there really really does um, uh, indicate with mortgages and uh, loans because uh, the better your credit rating the lower uh, interest rate you'll get and I, I believe that would also uh, apply to uh, car loans and when you're applying for loans at a, at a financial level at the dealerships um, and how to build a good credit score. Um, you can get a secured credit card if, if at the moment your credit's not looking too great uh, because of uh, really many, many reasons why your credit couldn't look good. Uh, there's many ways to fix that. Uh, a great way is to get that secured credit card where you would give a bank or institution 500 uh, dollars or more, which is at an ATB, and we would actually put that $500 or more into an investment account for you uh, and use that as collateral for a credit card, which would in turn help build your credit score up um, and paying bills on time. So if you were to get TELUS uh, or any of the other phone carriers, they also show up on your credit history and just making sure you're paying them off on time um, and then paying off those credit cards quickly um, and keeping credit card applications to a minimum. Um, here are some challenges that I've seen personally on, uh, on credit history uh, for a lot of individuals. Um, stuff that is like uh, 
uh, you would see on uh, like uh, at Best Buy almost like those uh, easy financial loans. Those are those are usually um, easy to forget about and easy to default on. Uh, and a lot of the times you want to make sure that you're just staying on top of those types of things. Um, and it's good to get your credit checked once a year um, just to make sure you're uh, looking for identity theft uh, to ensure your report is right because there can be errors um, where a random credit card or loan could show up on your credit or it could show that uh, you know you owe Shaw 20 bucks because you didn't return a piece of equipment uh, and you just want to make sure that that isn't showing up on your credit report um, and you, you can actually sign up for a monthly service that would uh, tell you what's going on with your credit report and if there have been any new inquiries or uh, any new loans taken. Uh, you can get a copy of your credit report actually directly on Equifax uh, website. Um, I, I, I can paste this link into the chat after we're done this uh, presentation. Um, and questions? There was one excellent question I saw in the chat from George. I don't know if George wants to read it or if, he, or if I can read it out for you, George. Let's have everybody unmute. Going on. Yes, hi. Uh, hi, George. Uh, for uh, several years now, I've been uh, deducting expenses uh, I use in the creation of artwork uh, where I get um, uh, royalties. Uh, and uh, that's been allowed for all the years that I've been doing it. And I'd wonder if you'd speak on that for a moment or two. Thank you. Excuse me. So you, you've been receiving royalties on, on your artwork? Yes. And uh, 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 apparently, uh, from my experience, uh, expenses used in the creation of uh, uh, artwork for royalty payments uh, is uh, allowed. Uh, expenses, yeah, you, you can definitely earn royalties as, a, as an artist. Um, and it's a good way to, uh, good way to add an additional uh, resource for your cash flow. Um, and use that money to uh, really create a good, strong budget for yourself, or add to your budget, so that you're able to, um, you know, continue with your artwork, or even take a break, uh, give yourself a little bit of a reserve. And does that kind of answer your question? Thank you. Thank you for the good question, Anna. Was that the was that the question that you were going to um, mention, Rebecca, or did you have another one? I was uh, looking at the chat box question uh -huh. that George had put, but I think that I think that was the same one. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Um, we had another one from Sayonara and she was wondering, um, or they were wondering, yeah, she was wondering, sorry, um, how the credit score works for new immigrants. Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking Sayonara. Uh, when you move to Canada as, a, as, a, as an immigrant, as, uh, basically your credit score is rejected, uh, which is a good thing. One time rejection is good, I think. <laughs> Basically, it means that you're able to sign up for uh, low limit credit cards, especially at ATB. I can speak to our program specifically. Uh, we are able to offer you a little bit of lending to get your, get your credit moving upwards. Um, your credit as an immigrant or a new person to Canada is the same as if you were 18. So it's brand, brand new and uh, you really have lots of possibilities to grow your credit as long as you're working with someone um, that can guide you in the right way. Great, thank you very much, Brom. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take, thank you. Uh, I'd like to take a moment and just reintroduce Liz from Momentum. She is, uh, sorry, she is a financial empowerment facilitator. 
Liz, take it away. The floor is yours. Wait, before we start, I got one person who isn't muted. I think it's Carla. Uh, uh, somebody is not muted who needs to be now. There are sounds going on in the background. Okay. Anyway, sorry, go ahead, Liz. Yeah, no worries, Margo. I appreciate you staying on top of the housekeeping and thanks so much for the great introduction, Karen. So uh, yeah, my name's Liz. I am a financial empowerment facilitator and uh, I work for Momentum, which is a local nonprofit. And I'm here today to speak really briefly on financial wellness programs that Momentum offers to help you manage your finances. And all of our programs are free. Um, so yeah, just because I'm going to be speaking rather fast today, uh, I have included my contact information on this first slide. So if you have any other questions that perhaps I can follow up with you on more in depth after the presentation, feel free to email me, lizw at momentum.org. And I have my phone number there too, which I will share again towards the end of the presentation. So as Karen mentioned, um, yep, I work for uh, Momentum, a not-for-profit uh, here in Calgary, but we do have participants that go a little bit outside of Calgary. I saw that there was someone um, on the call who's from Lethbridge, welcome. Uh, so Momentum is a not-for-profit, which I will talk more about later. But a little more about me. So as a financial empowerment facilitator, I've run workshops on budget, uh, credit, banking, for example. But the main program that I work on is called the Momentum Savings Challenge, which is Momentum, uh, pardon me, Momentum's only in-app program. And it gives you rewards uh, for saving money. And it was designed specifically for savers who are living on low incomes. So that's available on the Cuber app for free. Um, and basically how it works is you save $40 each month. Um, you're just building up an emergency fund. That's the goal here, build some emergency savings. And then um, by the end of the challenge, you'll have a good chunk saved up. So we can talk more about that later on. So, how does Momentum help people to save money exactly? Well, as a not-for-profit, we focus specifically on community economic development, which means that we work with both individuals and businesses and organizations like uh, Elephant Artist Relief, and thank you again for having us. Um, and we work with these groups to build a more inclusive local economy. Uh, one of the main ways we do that is by providing education um, that will help you feel empowered to take control over your finances, make the best financial decisions for you. And then the other interesting thing that we do, very exciting, very popular, um, we do have some incentivized savings programs. So we are actually paying people who are living on low incomes just to save their own money. And to date, um, we've provided over $4 million in um, matched savings through those programs. So as Karen mentioned, um, our motto is learn, earn, save, and thrive. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that um, and how we do that through our programs. So money challenges when you're an artist and disclaimer alert, these are the challenges that my participants have told me, my participants who are artists have told me that they encounter but if you see something that I'm missing here, I know George had an excellent one about royalties and um, you know you have that income coming in and then Brahm um, had some great points about how to incorporate that into a budget. If you see that I'm missing some sort of money concern here that really keeps you up at night as an artist, please type it into the chat um, and let us know. So here's what I've heard. Um, as an artist, you may have an unpredictable or low income. Perhaps it's you know quite high in some months and perhaps quite low in others. Um, and so when you have those fluctuations in income, how can you possibly make a budget or how can you plan for your spending, right? Um, 
sometimes people take on some debt. Um, and how can you, when you are living on a low income, chip away at that? Maybe you need a debt management plan. And to that end, what should your savings goals be really? Should debt be in there? Should you be more thinking about this over here, tools for work perhaps, materials to make your art, I don't know. Um, and one that I hear commonly is, I'm an artist, I wanna focus on my art. Please just tell me about things that are quick and easy so I can keep on creating and doing that. I hear you. Hopefully we can talk about some things that achieve that goal quick and easy today. So um, for more information on our financial empowerment programs, this is all on our website, momentum.org. So our financial empowerment programs basically fall into three categories. And they're different in terms of how much time you need to commit to the program, if you are required to save a certain amount or not. Like I said, some of our savings programs will give you rewards for savings. Um, other programs just teach you about money. You don't have to save at all. And then for those programs that do give you rewards for saving, um, different programs provide different incentives. So the first category is match savings programs. Um, you will be in a supportive group learning environment online, of course, right now during the pandemic, but usually we would do them in person. And so those programs, those match savings programs are an example of programs we run where you do have to save a certain amount every month, but you do um, get a reward for doing so. Now, the second category is more on-demand or in-app programs. So um, before the pandemic, we said, okay, these ones are available remotely. Um, so that's the difference. But now, of course, everything is available remotely. So how these ones are different is there is no set class date or time. You just start and stop whenever you'd like. And then the third category is financial coaching. So let's say you think to yourself, you know, my situation though is really very special and unique. And I just want to talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one, human to human, where I can say, this is exactly what's going on in my life. Give me advice that is tailored to me. So that's where financial coaching comes in. It's customized to your unique situation. So let's dive a little deeper into these match savings programs I was talking about. So um, the first aspect is you do have to attend classes, you know, once or twice a month. Um, they are typically in the evening. We do have one program that runs them during the day and you will learn um, about money. So uh, the core topics that we teach are budgets, credit, banking, um, assets, consumerism. Um, but there are some, uh, what am I trying to say here? Not optional, but um, they're add-ons. The class will vote on what you want to um, learn about. And so those could be investing, retirement planning, um, or home ownership. So you're attending these classes. The other thing that you have to do every month is you need to remember to save a certain amount each month. And again, different programs, different requirements, but typically anywhere between five and $70 each month is what we are, we're asking you to save in your own bank account. And then at the end of the program, momentum will match what you saved. Again, it, the amount varies from program to program, but it's typically on a three to one basis. So in this example, um, if you saved $20, Momentum would give you $60. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, and then what can you use those savings for? Uh, we have what we call a productive asset list. So again, each program has a different list, but typically you can use it for things like an emergency fund, a laptop, um, dental vision or healthcare, 
education or training, um, a damage deposit or the down payment of a home and lots of um, different flexibility there, depending on what program you decide to take. So sometimes people say, look, I don't have time to attend classes or your schedule doesn't really work for me. Or perhaps you have children and it is difficult to concentrate on an online class when you've got um, you know, childcare duties. So what we have here um, on the quick and easy side of things is the Momentum Savings Challenge, as I mentioned, is available for free on the Cuber app. And what Cuber is, is um, it's like an app that has a lot of different savings challenges on there. Um, lots of different companies and organizations will sponsor their own challenge. So Momentum happens to sponsor our own challenge on there. So um, what's great about this app is you can learn about money, just little tidbits in app and we'll email you once a month. Um, you get cash rewards for saving. And for this specific app, it does link to your bank account um, so that it can auto save for you, kind of like a pre-authorized debit. So uh, we really encourage people to try out this new program, start building an emergency fund. It'll help you feel less stressed about money. Um, and there's more details on momentum.org slash savings app. Now, let's say you do not feel like you're in the position to save right now. You just really want to learn about money um, and how you can do better with your finances. So that's great, too. And we have on-demand money management courses um, for that purpose. So uh, it's a series of videos. Um, there's no real class that you interact with, but there's interactive quizzes as you go if you want to check your knowledge, not marked or anything like that. Um, but the great part about it is because you are watching these videos and can start and stop at any time, um, you can stop it in the middle, go and fix dinner, have a smoke break, work on your art, whatever you want. Um, you can come back in a couple hours or a couple days and just uh, pick up where you left off. So topics, again, um, our core topics are assets, banking, um, credit, budgeting, consumerism. And we also have one for education savings on there. Um, so if you would like to register, there's no application process um, and no wait period. Just go on courses.momentum.org. And um, yeah, you can start and stop at any time. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about the Momentum Savings Challenge because that one is our only app-based program. And again, what it is, is a rewards program. Um, so uh, you can earn while you're saving through the Cuber Automatic Savings app. So the challenge specifically is if you can save $40 each month, you can get up to $100 in incentives. That's over a maximum of 10 months. So sometimes people say, again, especially if you're an artist, right? You're not sure if you're going to get income this month or next month, and you know it's kind of unsteady. So um, the great part about this challenge is it's very low commitment. You can stop at any time. So if you can save $40 this month, and then next month, let's say, no income, benefits get cut off, you have some sort of financial emergency, um, you can just cash out. Um, but of course, the longer you save, the more you can earn. And that's um, the beauty of this challenge. So uh, thus far, and we've been running the challenge since 2020, um, almost half a million dollars has been saved by our participants. And to participate in this challenge, you just need to be over the age of 17, you must be living on a lower income because we are a charitable organization uh, and you must live within 150 kilometers of Calgary. So um, with tax season quickly approaching, um, we always say this is a great opportunity um, to save part of your tax refund. You don't have to save all of it, just save $40 um, and just get the ball rolling uh, so you can start that emergency fund. So again, more details are on momentum.org slash savings app, and you can download Cuber for free 
It's on the App Store, it's on Google Play, um, and Cuber is like Uber, but with a Q in the front. So that's the Momentum Savings Challenge. Whoops, and of course, then I stopped my slideshow, but let me try again. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. Good recovery. All good? Very good. Okay, thank you. Um, so here's a, a little bit more on our on-demand money management. Uh, so these are our core topics. Again, budgeting, so taking control of your money, um, banking, being a smart bank customer. I'm sure Braun could tell you all about uh, banking, but if you wanted a really um, high level brief overview, all of these courses are under an hour. Um, assets. This one is really very popular for um, our participants who maybe don't have a very stable source of income because it talks about how do you solve life's problems with resources that you have that are not money. And as artists, I can imagine that a lot of you have a very um, special and unique skill set that can be used for all sorts of things. Um, and you maybe haven't even really thought about it or explored that. So I really recommend that course assets um, teaches you how to creatively use what you have to build your future. Uh, we have a course on credit. And then we have a course on consumerism and how do ads affect um, your spending habits. So that one's a really popular one too. Um, again, you don't need to phone anyone or email uh, to sign up. You just go on courses.momentum.org. But if you would like to ask a question, um, I'll post my information in the chat later as well. Okay, and that brings us to financial coaching. So if all of this seems very general money advice to you and you just want to talk to another human being one-on-one -on -one specifically about what's going on in your life, um, our financial coaches can help with everything from creating a budget to how do I track my expenses? Um, they can uh, help you come up with a debt management plan, reduce your debt and, um, they can also help you define some savings goals uh, and strategies that will help you support yourself, your art, and your family. So more details are on momentum.org slash financial coaching. I think we're sending out the presentations afterwards though. So uh, yeah, you'll have all of those URLs or feel free to email me and I'm happy to send you the right links. So that about rounds out my presentation. Oh, I think we're doing good for time too. So let me just tell you a little bit about where you can get more information. If you um, have never heard of Momentum before, but you're curious to know more, well, how do I join these free programs um, to increase my financial wellness? What other programs do you offer? Um, how are you able to reward people for saving? Um, it's through generous funders, really. But if you wanted to know more, um, please subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter. Uh, you can sign up on momentum.org slash publications slash newsletter. If you want to know more about the Momentum Savings Challenge, um, the info is on momentum.org slash savings app. Uh, or you can just email me or phone me and uh, my contact details are on the screen right now. So I am just going to stop my sharing so I can see if there's anything in the chat or any questions. I'll just type my email in the chat here. Perfect, I was about to say, oh, good. Oh yeah, I've got it. Thank you though. Oh, Let Liz, that was very interesting. I had no idea uh, the variety of programs uh, and the courses, how, mm -hmm. how wonderful. Neither did yes. I. I. I downloaded Cuber. 
Perfect. Thank you, Margo. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great. I use it myself, actually. So if if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm kind of curious, but I don't want to download it yet. Um, feel free to email me or phone me at any time. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how I was able to save using it on my phone. Mm -hmm. I've actually saved uh, quite a bit, actually. Well, I'm saving for winter tires. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. The fun stuff, the adult stuff, right? So yeah. I'm just going to check in the chat here to see if there's any questions. Okay, momentum is, yes, exactly. Did, um, did anybody catch any questions along the way? I didn't, but I had one actually. Okay. Yes. Um, Liz, I was just wondering, so for the, the services, like the financial coaching, is that Calgary area specific or do you offer that kind of province-wide or what does that look like? That is a great question. So um, although our, we mainly serve people within Calgary, um, certain programs don't check that um, vigorously, if you will. Um, so I would um, suggest that if you are really interested in our programs, you might um, want to try to book in an appointment and um, you will see that through, you know, I'm gonna provide a link, but through the link, um, you will see that you can just book an appointment directly with a financial coach. Although I do want to um, remind you that we um, work with lots of other partner organizations such as um, Credit Counseling Society, another great not-for-profit that serves all of Alberta, Money Mentors serves all of Alberta. And that's a great, point that you bring up Jocelyn and so you know I'd like to do a plug for one of our other partners if if you are feeling during the pandemic that you really need access to some sort of community resource whether that's food or mental health or maybe you know some seniors that need a little help um, 211 is Alberta's directory for all community resources so just call them up they have a website too and they can um, direct you to whatever you need. So please, everyone, um, if you need resources and you're feeling kind of um, stressed out about the pandemic, help is available. Call 211. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thanks for posting that, George. That's uh, very useful. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, if, do we have any time left here, ladies? Yep. Yes, of course. Yes. Perhaps what I can do is I can share a three minute demo of how Cuber works just so that people can see it because I know it's hard to visualize what an app, um, a savings app would look like. Would that be okay? I think that's a fantastic idea. Right okay. Great. Let's see here. So I'll just pull up this. Um, Share my screen. Let's see here. Share sound, optimize for video clip. Okay. Can you see my screen? No, nope. not nope. yet. No. Nope. Oh, I forgot to hit share. <laughs> well, oh, there now we now we can. Oh, thank you. I promise this. I've done this before. <laughs> I believe you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, this is how the Momentum Saving Challenge looks. Once you've downloaded Cuber, you click register now at the bottom, and then you click join group savings challenge. And that's where you're going to see all the challenges that were sponsored by companies and organizations like Momentum. Um, and this is where it will check to see if you're eligible or the challenge. So you don't have to worry, well, am I considered low income or not? Um, the app will actually check for you to see if you, your income is considered low. And it does that um, based on how many people are living in your household. This is my app, by the way. <laughs> so then it becomes a two-step process. In this first step, 
you're setting up your Cuber user profile. Um, so yeah, pretty standard stuff. I think you said you just signed up for it, right, Marco? It was pretty straightforward, right? Is it available for people outside of Calgary? Yes, okay. Sorry, that's a great question. I should clarify. Sorry. It was no, in the no. chat, I see. <laughs> yeah, don't be sorry. That's a great question. Cuber is actually available to anyone in Canada. But to join the Momentum Savings Challenge, you must be living within 150 kilometers of Calgary. So it will ask for your postal code and then it'll calculate it all just because of um, the agreement we have with our funder. But yeah, even if you are outside of that geographic range, you can use Cuber and you can earn Cuber's rewards. You just can't earn Momentum's rewards, unfortunately. Good to know, thank you. Yeah. So uh, that was step one. They set up the Cuber user profile and now they are um, setting what they would like to do for the Momentum Savings Challenge. And just to remind you, you're saving $40 a month, up to 10 months, uh, and you can earn up to $100. So here they're just setting their start date. This is a video from 2020. And then you can either choose $40 monthly or $20 bi-weekly. So that, by bi-weekly, I mean every other Wednesday or every other Monday or what have you. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, summarizing what they've decided on. And so how Cuba works is it links to your bank account and then like a pre-authorized debit, it will withdraw money from your bank account and it will move it to the Cuber vault. And if you're worried, well, I don't know if I can save this month, I just won't have money in my bank account, you can use our skip withdrawal feature and then it won't save this month, it just carries on with the next one. So here's where they are linking their bank account. Um, it's all the same info that you would find on the bottom of a check or that you would provide your employer um, if you were setting up direct deposit. And here's where it's reminding people that it's not an instant transfer. It could take up to five business days to move from your bank account to the Cuber Vault. So this is just rounding out the video. It's going to show you what the challenge dashboard looks like. Uh, yeah, so it's showing you, you know, this is um, the date of your next withdrawal. Here you can see that's the skip withdrawal button if you want to use that. Um, when you're expected to end, and again, it's up to 10 months that you can earn rewards through our challenge. Um, and you can see from the incentives tab that uh, you can earn $5 just for signing up. So that's what we call our little sign up bonus, but every time you save, you'll earn more rewards. So that is the Momentum Savings Challenge is a nut, in a nutshell, pardon me. Oh, sorry, George, that one's not available in Lethbridge. The on-demand money management, absolutely. Um, like I said, there's some flexibility uh, with some of the other programs you may want to ask um, the facilitator and I'm happy to ask for you if there is a particular program that you're interested in. Um, but yeah, we've had people as far away as um, India join the on-demand money management actually. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at wow. other. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular. So let's see. Uh, yes, we also have IT training. You're right, Stephanie, we do. Uh, yes, and if you are Indigenous, we recently were lucky enough to hire on an Indigenous financial empowerment facilitator. She is amazing. And she's able to incorporate her own experiences as an Indigenous person who grew up on a reserve and her mother was a um, survivor of residential school. She has these amazing, amazing stories. So she's able to incorporate that experience into her teachings. So I would look that up if you uh, identify as Indigenous. The program is called Money Moccasins. I think I've forgotten to list it on my presentation, but thank you for bringing that up, Stephanie. Yeah, we do have that one. Um, do we still have women's entrepreneur savings? So yeah, we, we have a lot of entrepreneurship courses still. If you're thinking, well, how do I turn my 
um, skill set as an artist into a viable business? Um, how do I build a business plan, etc.? We do still have those programs as well for free. Um, we don't have one that's specifically for women at the moment, though, but lots of different programs, um, ones that you can take for several months, or if you're just dabbling um, in the idea of entrepreneurship, we do have a, a good one called Entering Entrepreneurship, and it's really just two hours long. So, oh, I'm glad you like the music. That's one of the free ones. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think, I think that's all the questions that I see here. Thank you again, everyone, for your, um, for your attention tonight. And thank you for the questions. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Liz. That's fantastic. Um, I just wanted to say that I am a graduate of both the Saving Circles program back in 2007, I think it was. And uh, also uh, the Fair Gains program, which was, I think, uh, maybe five years ago or so. Great. Yeah. So those are two I, of our match savings programs that we still run. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe there's another one I can get involved with. I like the idea of the uh, Cuber. Yeah, so absolutely, if you've already, even if you've already taken the match savings program with us, you could get on Cuber and still continue earning rewards. But it's it's funny that you mentioned that, Carolyn, because yeah, not, um, fair gains and saving circles have been running for quite some time now. And in fact, those match savings programs over 20 years now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if somebody has been like myself, has been through them both, Yes. I don't suppose I could do one of those again. <laughs> it, I, I see why you're asking because they are great programs. Well, you know, I mean, the first one was 20 years ago almost. Um, so, you know, things change and circumstances mm -hmm. change. And just mm -hmm. curious, thought I'd throw that question out there. Yeah, it's good to ask. It's good to ask questions for sure. So um, the short answer is, not really. Yeah. Um, it would have to be really special circumstances. But if you wanted to talk uh, more about those special circumstances, please email me, phone me. I'm happy to chat more about that. Um, but yeah, typically, if you've taken those courses already, uh, the only other course you could take now is the Momentum Savings Challenge through Keeper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. great. Thank you. I thought I would just, because we did go a little over time today, I thought maybe I'd um, open it up uh, to see if there are any questions for uh, Brom or yourself, Liz. Just open it up. Sure. Thanks. Oh, Karen. Karen has a question. I have a question. Yeah, I found that how the credit score was calculated, uh, very interesting. Um, could you just review that again? And the other quick question I had was when it came to uh, contributions to your the things that uh, were not affected by it. Uh, I'm sorry, I. I didn't make notes uh, uh, that I can read in a in a jiffy. Yeah, that, no, no worries. Um, so with the credit score, uh, 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 were you wondering more what goes into making up the credit score? Yeah. So uh, I'll the just share the pie chart. Sorry, the pie chart. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll put that. I back. loved that. <laughs> yeah, it was a good visual for sure. I'm I'm glad my uh, uh, my leader Isabel was able to bring that up for us. Can you see my screen here? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Yes, we can. Perfect, sorry. Um, okay, so it consists of a few different things. Uh, your payment history. Uh, the payment history is um, really just making sure that you've uh, agreed, you're paying and uh, you're continuing to pay as agreed with the creditor. Uh, so if you were to take a loan from ATV and you said you'll pay every week um, at $1,000 a week. Uh, you're making those payments on time. Uh, you haven't missed any payments. And if you have, you've been able to make them back before they impact your score. Um, your current debt, which uh, 
makes up uh, the second biggest piece of your credit. Uh, if it's always good to keep your current debt at about 75% or less of how much you have borrowed fully. So if you have a bunch of revolving credit, uh, like if you have two, three credit cards or something, um, it's always good to make sure that uh, you're not maxing all of your lending out and keeping it about 75-ish percent to really maximize your credit score. Um, uh, the length of history is based on when you started borrowing and your oldest uh, credit facility. Uh, for example, me, I, I hate to say this, but I started borrowing at TD uh, when I was 18 because that was the, the bank that my mom used when I was what? young. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Traitor. <laughs> no, I, I left them. I'm, I'm, I found the, I found the, I found the bliss. Like I found the bright light at ATP, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so I still actually have that credit card active because it's my oldest trade. Um, and my mom told me to just keep the card open so that we had a relationship with TD still. TD is a good bank too. Don't get me wrong. They're just not as good as ATB is. But um. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so just being able to establish credit for a long period of time shows that you're responsible. Um, and as long as you're keeping good payment history with that creditor, it'll reflect well on your credit history. Um, and then the new increase, the new increase uh, count up to about 10% of your credit score. It's good to keep these at a minimum because the more hits you have, the lower your score will go. Um, just referencing back to car dealerships, um, when you're when you're looking to buy a new car and you need to finance finance the vehicle, it's a good idea to chat with the financial representative there and let them know that you do not want to get your credit pulled a uh, various amount of times, uh, because typically what they do is they they'll hit your credit at every bank that they can um, to get you the best deal or to make sure that they can lend to you unless they have specialized contracts with with an institution. Um, so it's I, I've honestly seen credit reports that have gone down 70 points because a credit dealer has hit like eight or nine times. And that really just does not reflect well for you, uh, especially if you're looking to get a mortgage or something, because because these these hits can stay on your report for a, a pretty long time. Um, um, I know I should, yeah. I should probably know this since I technically work at the bank, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but why, like, do, do you know why that, that has a negative effect or what's the purpose yeah. behind that? Yeah, definitely. So the reason it has a negative effect is it can look to the, to the agency that's collecting the credit report or collecting all the information and to borrower or lenders like myself, that you're, you're, you're a credit collector or like a, you're greedy for credit and if if you shop around to have a lot of credit opened it'll it, it, it it's an indicator to the institutions that you're you're seeking too much credit and if you try and get too much credit at once and if you have too much open it's a risk for me to give you more credit because if you were to max everything out at once that leaves you in a very um very tough spot and as a lender it would leave me in a tough spot because it shows me that you you have a chance of being over leveraged in the future, um, and, and that's never a good thing. Uh, and then the types of credit does that answer your question, Dawson? It does. Um, and uh, there was another question that came in, and it was just asking, uh, how can someone improve their credit score? Improve? Yes. Let me go back to that slide. <laughs> um, give me one second. It was around here, but really, typically, the best way to improve your credit score is to build a good credit history. And if your credit score at the moment isn't uh, isn't where you want it to be or where a lender might want it to be, uh, it's a good idea to chat with um, a specific lender like myself uh, to get a, a secured credit card. A secured credit card is uh, often secured by cash. Uh, so you would, if you came to me, you would give me $500, let's say. Uh, that $500 I would put into an investment account. Um, and it would still be yours. The investment would still be in your name. Uh, and I would give you a credit card using the investment as a collateral piece. Uh, very similar to how uh, on a much larger scale, you get a mortgage, we use the home as collateral because the risk is higher because it's a higher amount, right? But with the, with the, the risk at that point to, that you need a secured credit card is that because your credit's, your history is not great, 
but we're on uh, we're on the road to building something uh, that will be good and better. Um, so we use that collateral to give you the credit card, which in turn will give you the opportunity to pay the bill on time, uh, which will in hand in hand increase your credit score. Uh, and then your Telus uh, bills or you know your Verizon or your phone bill, those show up on your credit as well. And just making sure you're paying those on time um, and paying off the credit card or credit cards quickly will always be a good thing. Um, and just keep the applications to a minimum when you are on the road to building your credit. Uh, because again, going back to that, uh, the you know the increase piece, where if you're getting too many inquiries, if you came to me and Capital One um, and to TD or something to get credit, secured credit cards, uh, that would be a lot of hits, which would bring your score down and make it harder to maintain a good score. Okay. Thank you so much for answering that, Brahm. That in so much detail. Um, okay. Is there anything else? Any other questions? Oh, I can't video here. Any other questions? No. Okay. Well, gosh, thanks both you and Liz. Uh, this has been amazing, um, and I'm so glad we recorded this, um, so we can refer to it. Um, it, this will be accessible uh, at some point. I'm not sure when, but um, we have all of your email addresses if you registered through the Canada Help site. And um, we can contact you and let you know when, um, when this will be accessible for you to view again. Other than that, um, I know you can contact Liz if you have questions and I believe Brahm as well. I had to walk out for a few minutes. So I think you said that, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Wow, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Very yeah. educational and fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you both very much yeah. for joining us tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. Thanks everybody, night. for coming. If my, yeah, okay, great. If Margot and uh, Carolyn and maybe Rebecca could stick around for just a yep. minute. Yep, I'm just in the middle of writing you a text, but we can talk. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, any minute now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm give it a minute. Um, so you can, you can stop the recording and, and if something will come up asking you about saving it, you save it to your computer. And like, like Marianne said, and then once it's finished saving it, then she said, you can just drag it into Google drive. So, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how that would work, but can you, would you guys just be comfortable staying with me for just a moment, just to make sure that I do oh, this correctly? Absolutely. In fact, we could even, uh, Marianne said that she could help too. So I could even ask her and she could, she could jump on here and, and help you out. Okay. So Great. thank you for joining us, George. Yeah. I wonder if maybe he's not there. Hey. <laughs> oh okay uh, yeah, he's, he's still not. here yeah i think we're just going to have a uh you're gonna stop recording right you're welcome yeah <laughs> thanks have a great great time. Time. uh remember that when you download the video it automatically converts to a usable video afterwards and you uh, if you're going to drop it all in a uh uh, uh drive someplace make sure you you drop the entire folder because there's lots of files in that folder okay, thank, you. <laughs> thank you thanks awesome